So first we're going to remove the torque converter here. This thing is pretty big because of, of a big truck transmission. So you just support it so it doesn't put any side load on the axle or the, out, the shaft in there. And then just pull it out and we're just going to take this and put it to the side. Now it's, it's, it's very good practice to always replace the torque converter during a transmission rebuild. I say that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is, um, you know, there's still lots of transmission fluid in there and uh, when you do a rebuild you want to have nice fresh fluid. You could drain it, but it's really hard to drain it. Um, you could flush it with new transmission fluid, but um, the other main reason is that the, the torque and there's a clutch in there for the torque converter clutch. When you get to high speeds, it, in, it causes a mechanical link between this shaft and the engine instead of a fluid link. And especially one that's this old, that clutch wears and you'd like to have a new clutch. Um, so to get a new clutch, you have to replace the whole torque converter. It's just good practice to always replace the torque converter when you do a transmission rebuild. So what we're going to do next is we're going to measure the end play on this shaft. If you pull it in and out, it moves a little bit. And we need to measure that. That will give us an indication of what has worn and we, if we need to replace washers. And it's just a good practice to do measurements before you disassemble things. Um, so I'm going to set up my dial indicator to be on the front of this. I'll do that off camera. Um, but what I'm going to do is now ideally you should mount this dial indicator on the bell housing somewhere um, just so that it's perfectly perpendicular to this shaft because if you measure on an angle you're not getting a true in and out motion of this shaft you're getting an in and out motion with respect to an angle I mean you could figure it out but like it's, it, it just adds complication so you want to make sure this is as straight as possible um, with everything, with this just sitting by itself, the transmission will sort of go back like that and be up in the air. So if you can see, I put just sort of a, some stuff underneath the back to sort of prop it, to sort of prop it back up and um, get it to be flat this way. And I'm going to set up the dial indicator on my bench here um, to measure the in and out. The bench has a metal top so I can turn the magnet on and it, it won't really go anywhere and that's how I'm going to do it um, but I get, again ideally it would be best to mount it to the bell housing okay I have the dial indicator set up to be on the face of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to zero this out okay so I've zeroed it out now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this out and what we get is when we pull it out we get a play of 55 thousandths so whenever you take these measurements you want to do it multiple times and see if you get consistent results for every measurement you do so the end place specs for the a904 transmission is between 22 thousandths and uh, 91 thousandths according to the manual so uh, we are within spec all right so now we're going to remove the uh, extension housing. Now this came out of a four-wheel drive model so this part bolts onto the transfer case. There are non-four-wheel drive models where this whole back part looks different uh, but it's going to be sort of the same thing. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove it out of park by just um, pulling this little lever forward. You know, I'm going to make sure it's out of park by rotating the output shaft. Now after that's done we're going to remove the bolts that hold this on, this is 11 millimeters. One thing you want to do in transmission work is that whenever you're taking bolts out, always make sure they're the right size. If they're not the right size, keep track of which ones go where. Especially important for valve bodies. Can't really get my impact on that one. We got one down here. I need to get these long extensions to get in there. 
All right, now we're gonna flip her over, and this is where it gets messy. This is where it sucks. So that's why I got my little squeegee here. I'm just gonna focus on cleaning this fluid up until it stops coming out because someone forgot to uh, drain the transmission before he took it out. So I'm gonna do this for a little bit. I'll see you guys when I'm done. Okay, it's mostly stopped flowing. It's only been about a minute or so. Uh, this is really nice to have on these, uh, if your bench is flat, real flat like mine, it should be. Um, so, that, you know, that would have been a disaster if I didn't have, if I wasn't prepared. So, now we can finish getting the rest of these bolts. I think there's only two left. This one has a lot of junk on it. Let's sort of get all this junk off of it. These guys are really a pain. They're really in there. Pretty much the only thing I can get at them with is a wrench. I can't even fit a gear wrench in there. Let me get a better wrench. Alright, get you guys a little closer here. Alright, this one's being really stubborn. Alright, I finally got it. Um, what was happening is that there was a lot of gunk behind this and it wasn't allowing any of my sockets or wrenches or wrench heads to go on all the way. So I had to really get back in there, get the dirt out, then I had enough to get this whole thing on and then I tapped on the back of this with a hammer and got it off. You don't want to turn any fasteners unless you got a you know really good bite on it with most of the wrench. So I'm going to finish getting the rest of this out off camera and and this one. When I come back I'll see you then. Okay there's that one finally. And now this one I've already loosened. So I'm going to just just a tip about removing really stuck fasteners. Try to avoid this end for these really hard high torque situations because um, what, what will happen is that this will actually start to expand like this and then it will go over the corners of the bolt and that's how you round bolts off. Um, so if you're going to do that, you know, you always want the thickest wrench possible to do uh, when you're doing things like that. The thicker the wrench this in this direction, the less likely it is to expand under torque. So um, it's always better to use this end because this end um, won't expand like this one. So try to always use this end of the wrench if you can. Okay, I think that's all the bolts. So we're just gonna flip this guy back on the front. And now this is gonna be stuck on there. So we're gonna get a soft hammer Just give it a couple blows. It's coming. There we go. And don't pry in here. Um, you always want to avoid prying on aluminum, especially precisely machined um, uh, parts like this. So we're gonna take this out. Okay, so. Alright, so it looks like we have a small little snap ring right here we're gonna take out. And then looks like we can remove these clutch assemblies. So here's the pressure plate. Sorry about that guys, my camera cut out. Um, but I pretty much just remove the clutches and steels. The clutches are black, but um, all the uh, rebuild kits you get should come with new clutches and steels. 
Um, you should always replace the clutches and the steels. So now it looks like we have this snap ring down here holding this planetary in. So we're gonna just put a screwdriver down there and take this snap ring out. There we go, you just wanna get it above the groove. Now we're just gonna go around and just pry it out of that hole or groove. There we go. And um, whenever I'm taking things apart, I always set them on the bench in the order they came apart. So um, this snap ring was first, so I'm putting it all this way. What's first comes on the bottom. All right, looks like we have another snap ring in the same groove. That one I just took out by my with my hands. I just want to point out that uh, the first snap ring we removed from this uh, extension housing is a wavy snap ring, and uh, the second one is a flat snap ring. Now it's important that when you put these back together, that you put it so the flat snap ring goes in first. And then the wavy snap ring goes in second because we took off the wavy snap ring first, if that makes any sense. So, pretty much put things back exactly how they go. Alright, next we gotta take off this little cover here. We have two T25 uh, bolts. Off comes the cover. And I'm just going to put these bolts back in here so I can not lose them. And now we have this snap ring. So what we're going to do is, here let me change the camera position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in here with my snap ring pliers and expand the snap ring out. And then the assembly should fall down. Whoa, scared me, jeez. <laughs> All right, <laughs> now should be able to just pull this off. Now, if you notice, I was close to the edge and that's because we have these, uh, these two tubes here, get closer, that are protruding out and I just didn't want to put the whole weight of everything on these tubes. All right, so uh, that's over, we have all these assemblies to deal with. Alright, so next we have the governor assembly. If you watch my um, my video on how automatic transmissions work, uh, you'll know that for older transmissions, uh, I, this one was built in 1995, uh, that aren't computer controlled, this is sort of the mechanical signal for the speed of the vehicle. Um, I'm not going to go into that too much here. Uh, but it's held on by this snap ring, so I'm going to grab some snap ring pliers and we're just going to expand this out and remove it from the shaft there we go now this assembly should come off ah, we need to remove the little little valve on the front. Let me get you guys a better view. So here's the side of the governor and we're just gonna get in here with our snap ring pliers and take this oops, snap ring out. Alright, looks like we got this teeny tiny little snap ring right here going around. This valve doesn't want to, doesn't seem to want to come out. So, let's see if I can uh, take this snap ring out with this pick and uh, see if it'll pull out. See, Kind of the furthest 
far as it goes. I got this little snap ring off using um, just two little picks that I uh, just put in the snap ring, squeeze, and got out. Uh, it still doesn't want to come out. Again, the, the manual is really not being very good in terms of directions. So, um, just gonna keep trying stuff. Okay, I flipped it around. Let me take this little E clip off. Okay, so now this part comes out. Aha! Aha! There we go. Now we should be able to. Yeah, oh! Little keyway. It goes right here that keeps that uh, from rotating on the shaft. So we're going to take the keyway, take the assembly, take the governor and all the snap rings, put them aside. All right, so now looks like we have a, another snap ring holding this on. That's the thing about automatic transmissions is there are snap rings galore. All right, I wish I had a second pair of hands here. All right, there we go. Now it should be able to come out. There it is. So now we should be able to take the bearing off. All right. Okay, another snap ring underneath these teeth, it looks like. So I'm going to get my screwdriver in there. And I'm just going to pivot on one of the teeth to pull it out a little bit. Try to get my pin behind it. My pick. Picks come in real handy when working on automatic transmissions. So as I was taking this out, I realized that this whole thing was under spring pressure. And then I realized that in order to take it out properly, um, you have to sort of press this whole thing down and then take out this snap ring and then it allows you to remove the assemblies this way. Um, but I don't have a press and uh, I already had some of the snap ring out so I just went around little by little with two screwdrivers prying a little bit out of the groove each time until this whole thing popped up, which is kind of dangerous so keep your head out of the way. Um, and now, uh, this whole assembly comes out. Here's the one-way sprag. And uh, if we turn this, well, we can take out the planetary gear set. And then, uh, but if we turn this around, um, now that there's no spring pressure, we can actually reach in here and get the snap ring out. Let me get you a better view of that. Alright, so there's no more spring pressure, so we can easily take out this snap ring. This comes right out. And then this all this should come out. We got the oh, let me zoom out here. Got all the clutches and steels. Let me just take those out and take a look at them. Huh. And actually, these are not in bad shape at all. Uh, they're not really burnt up like the other ones. They're still, you can still see the red to them. On the bottom of this was a little uh, thrust bearing. Make sure you take note of which direction it goes on. The one-way sprag um, will just come out like that. And... Uh, we're just going to put this stuff to the side and we're going to clean all of this stuff later before we uh, put it all back together. Okay, now we're back at the other side of the transmission. We have a bearing right here, a little thrust bearing. There's a little lip. This little lip goes facing that way. And then we can pull the little piston out. So we're going to put these two guys to the side. Okay, next we're going to remove the little sensor right here. I already loosened it. It's a 1 and 1 16th socket, or at least that's the one I used on an impact. Let's get that out of there. Alright, next I'm going to remove um, this little shifter assembly here. This is an 11 millimeter. 
Just loosen that up. And the little pinch bolt here. Ah, there's another pinch bolt right here. Also, 11 millimeter. Pry this up. It's coming. Here it comes. And now this guy should just pry right up off of there. Come on. There it is. Oh boy. Lots of gunk. Uh, and uh, there's also a little E clip on this. Just gonna put my screwdriver in it and just pull it right out. Looks like that. And then there's a washer. And then I believe that's everything for this little unit until we take up the pan and look from the other side. So I'm gonna put all this to the side, clean all this off. So next to all that we have the little, um, this is an adjuster system for the band inside here. Uh, so we need to remove all this to loosen everything up. So this is a lock nut and you, you turn this to adjust the band. This is a 19 millimeter. Um, Huh. Okay, I guess uh, the nut's gonna stay on the shaft then. That's fine. So, we'll put, put this to the side. You can flip this thing over. Alright, now we're gonna remove these pump bolts. I'm gonna remove them now. The manual calls for a special tool to pull this out, <clears throat> but I'm willing to wager that, um, similar to the 4L60E, I bet there's a way to just pry this out from the inside when we remove the valve body. So, I'm going to see if that's the case uh, and just remove the bolts for now and then we'll get to pulling this out later. So I'm just using half inch socket. I'm just going to see if all these bolts are the same length. Yep, all the same length. Alright. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to flip this guy over on his side. Squeeze, you ready? If it gets too bad, it's not too bad right now. Uh, so now we're gonna remove all these bolts to the pan on the on the bottom right here. Then pull the pan. These are also half inch. Look at this. Now this looks pretty good. Um, <clears throat> my landlord actually changed the fluid a couple times in hopes to fix it. Uh, so there's not a huge amount of debris in the pan, but he told me that there was when he first opened her up. All right, we got three T25 bolts holding this filter in. The filter looks pretty new because again, uh, my landlord replaced the fluid and filter fairly recently. Okay, so we got 10 hex bolts. They're 7 sixteenths. We're going to remove these to remove the valve body. all the bolts in the same spot just in case they're all different sizes because I don't know if they are or not. Well, this guy is kind of blocking us up here. A little electrical connector, see if I can just... Uh-oh. Oh. 
bolts. Alrighty, there we go. Found out what the little dink noise was. It was a uh, check ball that came out of the uh, valve body. Okay, after looking at the valve body bolts, um, they're just two different sizes, which is really good. The, the longer ones go um, here, here, and then one right here. On this side, there's three. And then every other bolt are the shorter ones, so that makes it real easy. Okay, I figured out where the ball went. It wasn't a check ball, it was a ball for the this uh, detent lever. There's a spring right here, and when you as you turn this, the ball goes in these grooves. I'm not quite sure how it fell out, but um, I gotta keep track of that because I can't really put it back in there. So we're gonna take this whole valve body, put it to the side, and this, this valve body would be a whole other entity in and of itself. We're not gonna touch it right now. Alright, so we got this little accumulator spring and uh, piston, as well as another spring in here. It goes in like this. So this is the little adjuster mechanism for the band. When you tighten the rod up here, it sort of pushes this down. This pushes this up and then the rod pushes this down and it squeezes the drum. So we're going to take this little piece out and then now I think I think I should be able to pry in here. Let's try down here. Ah! I knew it! Washer right here on the bottom. Put that that way, and then pull this out. The drum looks pretty good. It's not scored. It's really smooth. How's the band look? Uh, not too bad. The band does not look too bad at all. It's a little. It's um, has a little bit of black in there. But there's still, you know, friction material left. So let's pull out the planet. Shaft. So we gotta take this out, uh, take this apart separately. All right, we got a nine sixteenth nut right here. So what this does is um, tension the rear band back here. All right, next we have these three eighths bolts on the back. Okay, so looks like we got a snap ring holding this thing in. Sorry if I get in the way of the camera. There's a snap ring. So now this back part should just, yeah, just come out now. Now that all the bolts are out, we can uh, take this gasket off. All right, well, I'll get the rest of this off later. Okay, now for these two assemblies, um, I almost missed it. So we have this little three tanged washer that goes in here along with a, another thrust washer that also goes on top of the three tanged washer and that that part sits up with this part so you can't forget these two little spacer washers here right, so now we should be able to remove this the sprag on the drum and then we have the the band how's this band doing a little worn down here in the bottom, it's black, if you can see it. It's kind of black right here. Uh, but then you could you could see the friction material on um, 
these two guys. One lay Sprague. There we go. Now you, you got to remember the orientation of this. When you're putting it in, let me see, looks like that, not like that. And there's a difference, so um, if you look at the shape of these guys, uh, you sort of have this little point thing on the right hand side, and that goes into the case like this. If you were to flip this around, that point would now, that little point right here, be facing to the left. It's very important you put these back in in the same way they came out because th what these do is the, uh, these allow rotation in one direction and lock in the other one. So it's designed to lock in one direction and spin in the other. If you put it in reverse, it's going to flip those two things around and it's really good. you're going to really have problems. So whenever you're taking out these one-way sprags, be careful and just note um, how it goes back in. Alright, so now in the back, we can pull out this little uh, pin here. Pull that out. Now, uh, there's bolts here to remove this little, uh, to this, remove this steel um, holder that the sprag sits on. Uh, there's no real reason to remove it. Uh, it's just solid steel, you know. We're going to clean this case anyway, and, and there's just no reason to remove it. So I'm going to keep that in there. Uh, next, we need to remove the uh, these two accumulators. So I'm just using a C-clamp to compress this accumulator just a little bit. Um, then I'm going to get in there and remove the snap ring. There we go. Snap ring. Loosen this clamp. Now a lot of the times what you can do is you can actually use compressed air to blow into the passage behind this, but I don't know which passage it is, but I'm going to try anyway. I got that on camera. Okay, I tried to reassemble sort of how it was supposed to come out, you know, instead of flying on my face. So you have this top part, then we have this big spring, and then we have uh, this little part right here that has a little valve in it. So we could take this apart further. Um, I'm gonna actually wait to do that until a later time, clean all the sub assemblies later. Alright, this little rod is really coming up for this thing, so let me see if I can get the snap ring out and the accumulator out without taking it off. There's the snap ring. Aha. It's the top part. We got the spring, this purple spring, and then we have this whole assembly right here. Alright, I managed to get this out. Just pulled it forward and flipped it out like that. Um, this shaft's not coming out. I'm just gonna leave this in here. It's, it's really not a big deal. Um, there's really no point to take it out. I'm gonna clean this whole thing anyway. So, uh, alright. Okay, believe that's everything in the main case so we're gonna put this to the side also a little side note when you're carrying castings like this like the case be really careful because um, there's a lot of sharp burrs and stuff around the corners of things um, so all around here is all very sharp and I have had unfortunate happenstance of picking one up like this one time and slicing all across my hand. It wasn't very bad, but it could have been really bad, so be careful. Alright, a couple more assemblies and then we're done tearing this thing down. So, 
you look in here, there's a snap ring. Let's see if I can get my snapping pliers in there. There we go. So now, there's the, ah, I forget what shaft this is. Input, input shaft. So then, you got the sun shell here, planetary assembly here, and another shell. Um, there's some select, there's some washers in here. I'm just gonna keep those in there. Another snap ring in this assembly. There we go. We'll just take that out. We got another selective spacer right there. And uh, we're, we're pretty much taking all these apart so we can clean it much better. Uh, for now, I'm just sort of going to keep them together so that when I clean them, I know exactly um, how they should go back. A whole bunch of washers up here. Let's keep all the washers and stuff straight. Here we go. Now let's take this guy apart. Uh, I just want to show again how this three-pronged uh, washer goes in here. It seems like it only goes in one way. Uh, these aren't symmetrical. And then we have this washer that goes on top right here. And that's on this unit. Okay, now these two clutch packs, um, we're going to wait to redo, rebuild them in another video. Um, because... Uh, I need to make a special tool that I can use to compress these things uh, for both of these. So these will be in another video. Uh, the disassembly of the pump will also be in another video. Okay, here's the whole transmission laid out. Uh, in the future videos, we're going to redo or uh, rebuild the two clutch packs. Um, you know, the pump and the governor assembly, that'll probably all be one video. And then we have uh, the valve body, it's a whole nother animal. Uh, so that's it for this video. Make sure to watch part two, and thanks for watching.